What's up everyone, this is Mini, and today I'm coming at you with my build for the United States. Now, before we get into this, a quick reminder, don't forget to hit like on this video, make sure to subscribe, and leave me a comment telling me what super ships you've been playing and which one you want me to cover next. But, let's get into it and let's talk about the United States. So, the United States is the new super ship carrier in the American line. To unlock it, you have to get all the way to the midway and then spend 48 million credits on the ship. Bonus though, this does not get reset if you were to reset your carrier line for a research bureau point, so you get to keep it permanently. Downsides, 360,000 service credit cost. But let's talk. First off, I am running Halsey on this because Halsey can make the ship absolutely busted. Right now, the ship is really strong in 11.3, and Halsey makes it even better. So, what you're going to want to spend your points on, you're going to want to spend your points in your standard build to start. Air Supremacy, get the aircraft back 5% quicker. You're going to want to get the improved engines to increase all of your squadron speed by 2.5%. And then I agree with them, get the aircraft armor and get the survivability expert at tier 3. Now, a little bit of a change at tier 4. You absolutely want the anti-torpedo protection negation because your torpedo bombers do 8200 damage as max and so lowering the ability to negate that damage means these things slap i am routinely hitting 30 to 40k with those torpedoes if i land all six and even if you only land four you're still hitting 20,000 damage which is insane instead of taking the enhanced aircraft armor which is valuable i like to take bomber flight control because you want to have the increased speed on your bombers this gets your regular bombers to 141 and 179 knots, and this gets your special bombers to 142 to 284 knots. You want this speed because these things are slow otherwise, and it's critical to have them. Now, with that being said, that'll leave you with four points left. And here's where there's a couple different routes you can go. Some people like to say, you know what, I want to have the enhanced aircraft armor so that I don't get shredded by flak. I don't see it as worth it, but I can understand why you would take it there, but that's up to you. I also don't see site stabilization as worth it. The torpedoes narrow ridiculously quick, as do the attack aircraft and the bombers, so I don't see 7.5% as worth it on this. Where I do see my value is taking the torpedo arming distance. With this, I drop my torpedo arming distance down to 400 or 444 meters versus the 500 meters it was before. That is a big difference. And with how quick these torpedoes move at 37 knots, which is decent for aerial speed, as well as the fact that they have that low arming distance, you can slap not just battleships, but cruisers and even occasionally hit a lucky torp on those DDs. That'll leave you with two points left. I absolutely recommend taking the improved engine boost. That couple extra seconds on your jets is really critical because you're going to want to have your ship sitting back line so you're not getting spotted. So two extra seconds of boosting your planes is actually viable on this ship, whereas I don't usually recommend it. And that leaves you one point left. And you have some options here with this point. You could go for last gasp because that'll enable you to get those extra attacks off with your rockets and your regular bombers but i don't always find that to be useful because i may not be doing that you could also go for engine techie getting the reduced uh, engine cooling reload time on your speed boosts or you can go for search and destroy which gives the patrol radius a 10 percent buff now i really do like search and destroy and i mean you could go for the direction center for fighters but i don't see that as worth as much because the fighters only have about 20 seconds the reason I really do like the search and destroy is because when you put this out, you can really use it to deny the enemy super ship CV's direction he wants to go. So it's only 20 seconds, but when the man is going at 300 knots and he has to suddenly break and turn to dodge a giant swath of the map for 20 seconds, that can be really valuable in messing up his attack runs, denying him time, even getting his planes killed because they have to sit in AA longer as he maneuvers around. So I really like Search and Destroy, but I can also understand Last Gasp or Engine Techie. It's up to you where you find the points to be most valuable. Now, let's talk about equipment on this. First slot, as always, first slot, you want air groups mod one, get your squadrons returning quicker. This only applies to your attack aircraft 
and your regular bombers, but it's still worth it. Slot number three, I like to take the aerial torpedo modification. I don't see needing the extra time on either of these to be that valuable, especially because for your torpedo bombers, you're gunning in at 300 knots and change, and so you're in and out very quick. Slot four, bomber modification isn't worth it to me, even though it gives it to two sets, because of the fact that your torpedo bombers are right now really your big damage dealer. So if this changes in the future and they nerf the torpedo bombers, definitely consider switching it over to regular bombers. But right now, having that extra health on the torpedo bombers is clutch to keep those alive. That gets them up to 2,800 hit points per, which makes it a little easier to survive. Slot number five, I like to take flight control mod to lower the aircraft preparation time another 5%. And then in slot six, I take air groups mod two for the extra aircraft uh, hit points on everything. There's a case to be made for taking the 5% flat squadron speed buff, but I like to have this because I think having the extra HP is far more critical than anything else. One thing to note, I forgot to mention, Halsey you also want to take because when you proc Confederate, which you should most games, you get that uh, plane reload time lowered even more, and that drops these torpedo bombers from taking 135 seconds to prepare down to 108 seconds, which is an insane buff to them. Finally, let's talk about the exterior. Now, there's a permanent camo you can use. However, the downside of the permanent camo there is no credit reducing cost on it. You get a better XP per battle buff, but there is no credit service cost reduction. Your choice on whether it's worth it to you or not to use that and get it, bear that in mind. I'm running right now Cartographer on it because I'm liking to have the extra credits per battle plus the XP and Commander XP, but you gotta make your pick on what you want. With flags, as always, run whatever's gonna give you a bonus if there's anything. And then with signals, you're going to want to run the economics and specials because these things are making boatloads of credits. Any game where I get over 200,000 damage and a kill or two, which is a lot of games, I'm getting usually 1.1 to 1.5 million credits before service costs. So that comes out to about 800,000 to 1 million credits in profit, which is massive. Move over Missouri, there's a new king in town. Regarding combat signals, if you're going to run combat signals, I would recommend running India X-Ray for the fire and the bombs. I would run Juliet Whiskey to get the floods, and I would run Victor Lima for the floods and fires. The other ones, you don't really need the ship speed, but you can always take it. And then the consumables and such, there's not that much value. You could consider going for the Mike Yankee because it does have good secondary batteries. So if a DD sneaks up on you, you can still wipe the floor with it. And then AA damage because enemy CVs will try to snipe you. So having that extra bit of damage is valuable. And beyond that, there's really nothing else I see as justified. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoy it. Like I said, make sure to like the video and follow here on the channel on YouTube. We're close to 500 as of the making of this video so working towards those new goals and make sure to leave me a comment telling me what super ship you think i should get next and then create the build for you guys so i can help you out as always this is mini signing off